Welcome, everybody. We're going to get going here. We're so happy to have you here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Feeling blessed. So we're going to start by praising God. Oh, wow. 
Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Amen. Welcome to Cornerstone. For you who come all the time, good to see you today. Good, good to have you. some Kansas folks who are back for the winter, Bill and uh, Melanie, and uh, glad to have other visitors here. If you are visiting for the first time today, I hope you don't feel like a visitor for longer than about that. If you look at the back, it says, enjoying God and enjoying community, and we love the community. And this is a great place just to love on one another, to make Amen. friends. And a part of the way we do that is by taking a few minutes during our service to just um, interact with each other. Say hi to a friend, uh, meet a new person you've not met before, grab a cup of coffee if you didn't have a chance to do that already. So we're going to take the next few minutes just to greet one another, and then I'll call us back together for, for some announcements, and we'll move on with our service. Amen. 
Okay, I was not a school teacher, so I don't know all the tricks about how you, what you do to make everybody else bump, 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 bump. Yeah. You know, I, I wasn't at church once where you, you would say, I have an announcement, and everyone would cheer. And that would be the, that would be the, the signal. So, let's try that. I'm going to say I have an announcement, and I want you all to just cheer, okay? All right. I have an announcement. <laughs> okay. Again, we're glad that you are here today. Uh, several things I want to call to your attention. First of all, this being a month with five Sundays, we do not have a service next Sunday. This is a week where if you're a part of Cornerstone family, you've already gotten emails about volunteer opportunities in the community. St. George and elsewhere. So uh, let's just use this. Are we okay here? <laughs> I like your new jeans. Uh, the other tags we won't worry about. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen here at Cornerstone, okay? It just, we just have a good time. Anyhow, so there's no service next Sunday. Sometimes on this Sunday we meet here still for a time of worship. That will not be the case. Um, this week. So remember, if you show here, show up at like 5 till 9 next Sunday morning and you're the only one here, probably the rapture didn't happen. Uh, you just forgot that we didn't have a service uh, next Sunday. Okay, today is our annual business meeting. Starts at about 11.30 and if you're a member of the stone, yeah. you will stay. And uh, to that point, I'm just really jazz that our lead pastor Charlie Stumbaugh is here and is going to be preaching today. Yeah. Yeah. For both of you, Charlie needs no introduction, but for those of you who are visiting today or new to Cornerstone, Cornerstone is one church, but by God's grace we currently have four campuses in Salida, Buena Vista, Leadville, and up in Summit County. We have three campus pastors among the four campuses, and our campus pastor Jason is down in Buena Vista this morning, Salida tonight, and Charlie, our lead pastor, uh, will be preaching today. And uh, Charlie, it's always a blessing. So I will go ahead and tell you, get your pen out, get paper out, because you will be invited to take copious notes, okay? Remember that word the next time you play Scrabble. You might win on that word. Okay, next weekend is our marriage retreat. Yay! Okay, so for if it's only for married couples, so if you're thinking about getting married or you'd like to get married, Another time. It's for married couples, but to any married couple uh, who have not yet registered, let me tell you what's going to happen if you don't come. Next week, you're going to talk to some of your friends. You're going to hear how great it was. You're going to look at each other and say, we should have signed up, okay? So just go ahead and do it. It's not too late to sign up, is it? Okay, so marriage retreat this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, and then for people who are in that retreat, there will be some small groups that continue for a few weeks uh, after that. Okay, Alpha Course. We're beginning a new Alpha Course beginning this Tuesday, January 25th. <laughs> here at Cornerstone. How many of you have been in Alpha before? Yeah. It's amazing. So if you've not been through the Alpha Course, um, it's just a, it, it's a great time of learning, a great time of questioning, and especially just a great time of interacting with others, building relationships, because you know we grow best when we're growing together. Amen. The Christian life is not a solo journey. I am not the body of Christ. You are not the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Amen. One by one, we are easy to pick off. Amen. But when we stand together, my goodness, yeah, uh, what a force to be reckoned with, Amen. with the power of the Holy Spirit. So, Alpha, great time. And then, ladies, we're having a Valentine's book exchange party. Woo! Sunday, February the 6th, yeah. at the morning, yeah. home. Okay. Uh, 6 p.m., uh, starting Sunday, next no, February 6th, okay, two weeks. And I don't normally do the deacon thing. I got fired as a deacon a few years ago because I couldn't make coffee. I spilled it all the time. So I got roped in today, and I thought, well, that's great. So I'll, I'll just take the offering. Forgot that I had to make the announcement. So um, Wes, and if you can grab someone else, there are um, offering little bags right next to Laylee's there, and we need a couple people to help. No, they're inside, there we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. See, I'm gonna get fired again from <laughs> pretending to be a deacon today. So let's have a word of prayer, and then we will uh, give to God his tithes and our gifts and offerings. You know there's a difference between those, aren't there? The tithe belongs to the Lord. That's right. Um, it, if it did under the Old Testament, how much more 
in the, un, under the new covenant when we live under grace. And what we recognize now is that it's all his, including the part we get to keep for our groceries and our house payment and all the rest. So we just want to honor him with all that we have. And so we give to him his, his tithes and our gifts and offerings. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that the king is alive. Always has been, is today, always will be. And we are gathered to worship him. And uh, we rejoice that we can live in his power and in the midst of his providence. Thank you for gathering us together today to worship you. We thank you for the opportunity we have to give back to you a portion of what is already yours. And may our giving be an act of thanksgiving. May it be an act of worship. May it be an act of gratitude. And it may it be a reminder for us that it's all yours anyway, that everything we have came from you. Right. And we pray that you would take these offerings and use them to extend your kingdom here in Lake County and the surrounding counties and to the ends of the earth. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
truth in a way that it's never held on to it before. That God, ultimately, there's nothing better than you. That you are the crescendo of our faith. That God, you are our single pursuit. And so we just say yes to that this morning. Look forward to the expectancy 
of heaven coming to earth and just flat out wrecking us. Yes. God, I pray that as we collide with you, the seismic activity of that, uh, that collision would forever change our lives. Hallelujah. And God, may it spill out of this community and forever change yes. the lives of those that we come in contact with. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wreck us today, Daddy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, it is absolutely good being with you, as always. Yes, Kimber. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes. Kiddos, go, go play. I'll, actually, I'm going to go too. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> it is good seeing you guys today. You know, as I was reflecting on that song, I might have like three or four little sermonettes today, so get comfortable. Um, I think sometimes in our Christian faith, there's so many promises that God gives you. Like, the Bible tells you and me that his promises are yes and amen. There's, there's so many things that God makes available to you and me that we might live life and life to the fullest. Amen. And although that is true, the older I get, the more I realize that the crescendo of my faith is just to simply know God. Amen. That's it. That's it. That, that's, that's the end result. That God is so intoxicated. That God is so euphoric. That I want to be like Paul and say, God, at the end of the day, all I want to do is I want to know you. Yes, that's it. I want to know you and the power of your resurrection. I want to share in the fellowship of your sufferings, being like you in your death, that somehow I can attain to the resur resurrection of the dead. I remember early in my faith, it was, I want to serve God because... He'll make this better, or he gives me joy, or he gives me... And all those are true. Yes. But the older I get, um, what I seek the most is that still soft voice. What I seek the most is just that face-to-face that -face moment with my dad that forever changes my life. And so, honestly, when we sing a song like that, I pray that it resonates in our hearts in a way that we're like, whoa, Daddy, I, I don't want to pursue you for what I can get. I want to pursue you for whom I might know. And that changes everything. Amen? Amen. 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 Uh, another thing I just, I just, I love coming up here. Um, <laughs> I was like Josiah over there, like ripping it on the trap set, man. And a couple things that I find solace in, <clears throat> is one, the privilege of watching a young man grow in the Lord. Um, Amen. I have the privilege of seeing this kid like this big. And, and, I, yeah, and when, you, when you kind of, you don't live in it, you know what I mean? Like y'all are used to it. And, and when I only get to come up a couple times a year, you get to see that growth and, and it resonates in your heart and you know oh, you're, yeah. you're part of something bigger than yourself. But what it reminded me of this is the legacy we leave behind. You know why Josiah's behind that trap set? Because of a young man named Philip Chase. Come on. And some of you don't even know Philip Chase. You wouldn't know him if you ran into him. Yeah. But he forever will have an imprint on this campus. Hallelujah. He's left a legacy yeah. that you and I continue to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so life is not how you find something. Life is how you leave something. Um, yeah. And so, what will our legacy be? Um, and so that was just a great reminder. So one, thanks for being faithful. Um, but the shout outs to those who leave legacy, um, those who, to, who leave succession, um, and those who champion those in such a way that uh, what we do lasts longer than our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I'm taking up a second offering for all of that, and then I'm just kidding. I get to talk to you today about vision. Um, when you when you go to Summit County, when you go to downtown Leadville, when you're in Salida, there's certain buses. You can go to a bus station, and at that bus, there's oftentimes a little sign that communicates its destination, right? 
And depending on where you want to go, obviously is determined by what that sign says. If I want to go to Copper Mountain, but I get on the bus to Arapaho Basin, although I might still be skiing, I'm not going to wind up at my destination. Does that make sense? You can go to a Greyhound bus station, and you can travel. You can say, I love traveling. But if your destination is Dallas, and you get on the bus going to Phoenix, you're going to wind up in a city. It's just not going to be Dallas, right? right? And so the vision's a lot like that. The Bible tells you and me in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, that lest two be in agreement, how can they walk together? Come on. Habakkuk 2, 2 tells us that write up plainly that a herald may run with it. In Revelation, or excuse me, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18, it says this. It says that without vision, people <coughs> perish. Or in another translation, it says, without vision, people literally cast off restraint. Vision is what unifies us. Vision for you and me is the bus we're getting on. Come on. It's, it, it's what we get excited about. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, one of the things that we're going to navigate is we can always do together what we could never do apart. There's things that God wants to do in us, and us being in agreement, us using our energy, God, uh, you, us using the gifts that God has given us to help perpetuate the vision, purpose, and direction that God gives us is very important. And so the invitation for you and me is simply this. Hop on the bus. Come on. And let's get on the same bus, and let's get in the right seat, and let's see what God can do in and through us for his glory and for his honor. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Daddy, I love you so much. Right. Uh, what, a, what a joy it is to be a part of your kingdom. And I just ask God in Jesus' name that you would make clear what you want to convey today. I pray that it would pierce minds and go to hearts that we would leave forever changed for your glory and your honor. God, we, we just, we recognize the gravity of yes this morning and we just simply say yes to you. God, that whatever it is, our answer is yes. Not my will, but your will be done. So, Daddy, we love you. And in humility and brokenness, we ask that you would do in us what we could never do in and of ourselves. We choose to open up the door and invite you to come in and live with us as we live with you. As always, Daddy, I ask that you hide me behind the cross of your son, Jesus, that God, this morning, you'd receive all the praise, glory, and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray and everyone say, Amen. 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 <laughs> the vision of Cornerstone Church is very clear. And what gets us up in the morning and as we talk about as in terms of trajectory and purpose as elders and what we navigate as, as staff is simply this. We believe that our number one responsibility here on earth is to bring heaven to earth and forever change the spiritual culture that God has has called you and me to. Amen. That's our passion. What does it look like for you and me to bring heaven to earth? Heaven to earth in my life and heaven to earth in this church. What does it look like for you and me to bring heaven to earth and forever change the spiritual culture of the communities that God has called us to? You can't give what you don't have. If you can't taste of heaven, or have, if you haven't tasted heaven, you can't describe heaven. Does that make sense? It's really important for you and me to realize this. That as we embrace this idea that God has called Cornerstone Church from Salida to Summit to bring heaven to earth. We have to own that responsibility because we are plan A. God doesn't have a plan B. God could come down and say, dude, I exist. Stand up and recognize, right? But he doesn't. He manifests through those that he impacts. And it's really important. I want you to write this down. Here, here it goes. I want you to take copious notes. And let me tell you why. Because, guys, I don't want this to be the last conversation we have about this. Okay? What you, what you fail to use in life, you lose. Atrophy spiritually, atrophy emotionally, atrophy physically, atrophy relationally is a real thing. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it, I promise. And so church is not a moment where I can, I can goof off, right? And I can entertain you, but my goal is not to entertain you. My goal is to disciple 
you. Yes. And discipleship is a two-way street. You have ownership in discipleship, and part of that is stewarding the information that God gives you. Does that make sense? And so, although we love worship, and, and, and yeah, we want great communicators up here. That would suck, right? If you're like, dude, I, what a great pastor, but man, he can't put two sentences to save his life, right? So, but that's not the point. The point is for us to disciple, amen? So that's why we say copious notes. I'm passionate about it, okay? That's what, so write this down. Are you ready? You are the highest concentration of the manifest presence of God here on earth. Do you hear that? In light of creation, in the backdrop of creation, in the backdrop of, of a powerful volcano or an earthquake or a thunderstorm or a hurricane or the tenderness of a flower or the grandeur of a sunset, do you realize today that you are the highest concentration of the manifest presence of God here on earth. You carry with inside of you the resurrected power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and he absolutely expects you to do something with that. Come on. You're his plan A. You are the objects of his love. He works in and through you to demonstrate the power of God's kingdom through all his hue and all his color. When you don't come to the table, that color is absent, right? And so part of recognizing our vision is to recognize the gravity of what God has called us to steward in bringing heaven to earth. I own in humility and brokenness. I come alongside the Father and say, thank you. I don't know why, but I say yes to you. And I recognize this morning that I am the highest concentration of the manifest presence of God here on earth. I carry with inside of me the resurrected power of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he absolutely expects me to do something with that. Our job at Cornerstone Church is to bring heaven to earth what an invitation and forever change our lives and the lives of the people around us when I collided with my bride that relationship was an intoxicating relationship that relationship touched parts of me that I couldn't touch as a single man that relationship this relationship brings out in me things that I can't bring out in and of myself. Does that make sense? And so it's very easy for me to talk about Caitlin because of the impact that she has on my life. And when we wrestle with the Father and we come to know Him, the power of His resurrection, we begin to realize that we are the highest concentration of who He is in our lives. And He's given us the permission. He's invited us into a space that says, I want you to be the one to tell people about me. <clears throat> tell them of my love, my grace, my mercy. Tell them of my reconciliation, my power, my restoration. Tell, me of the sp tell, tell them of the space that we carry of intimacy and invitation into most. You are the highest concentration of the manifest presence of God here on earth. You carry the power of the resurrected Jesus and he expects you to, some, to, to do something with that. And to do that is to know who God is. When we accepted Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, it's very important for us to realize that we didn't come, become a part of the kingdom of God and expect God to give us something. Does that make sense? The relationship is reverse. I am his servant. He is my creator. He is the architect and engineer of my life. He knows best how I should live. He sets before us life and death, blessings and curses. And the invitation is for you and me to choose life. This is not my kingdom. It's his kingdom, right? What does Jesus say to you and me? He says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come your will be done why because the most intoxicating the most euphoric the most life-giving the most satisfying thing you could ever pursue is his kingdom why because he designed you that way that's why the bible tells you and me in in, in first corinthians chapter 6 verse 20 it says don't you know that you're a temple of the holy spirit come on 
that your life is not your own. You've been bought with a price. What an invitation for you and me. What a declaration that the kingdom of heaven rests inside of me, that I'm a temple, that the power of the Trinity resides in. When God said, let there be, guess who put it into fruition? Holy Spirit. When God set the boundaries between water and land, guess who did that? Holy Spirit. Are you kidding me? And you're a temple of that. Come on. That should get you amped. Paul says it this way in Philippians chapter 1. He says, for me to live is for Christ. And to die is gain. He goes on to say, oh, it would be far better if I were in heaven, right? Because heaven's real, right? And so my wife tells me to stop eating junk food. I said, baby, I, I have no intention of living forever in this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to go bye-bye someday. And so until then, I'm going to enjoy a few things. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> I don't want to live forever in this, right? I put on a new body, right? I don't have to save this one. <laughs> that was for you, Pam. I know you're like, oh my gosh. I'm <laughs> and I, I'm only joking, Pam, because I love you. <laughs> I don't let my wife talk to Pam because I will have a nutrition plan. I'll be eating kale. I'll be signed up for Shackley and I'll have all this nutrition <laughs> stuff. But, but there is some truth. Take care of your bodies. I'm joking Amen. right now. Okay, you're a temple of the Holy Spirit. I, that's a joke, side note. But we have a responsibility. We, 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 if we're going to draw breath, this is something I do and I quite literally do it. When I get over the initial appointment that I, a disappointment that I had wake up in heaven and I draw breath, one of the first things I say, okay, Daddy, today I live for you. Because for me to live is for Christ. To die is gain. You are God's plan A. God invites you and me to participate in the way that he's going to redeem humanity. We've been called to bring heaven to earth and forever change the spiritual culture of our lives in the communities that God has called us to. I love the back and forth conversation surrounding Jesus and Peter. When Jesus poses a very formative question in Matthew chapter 16, and he says, who do the people say I am? And we know that many chimed in. Some say Elijah, some say John the Baptist, and some say other prophets. And he points the question, well, who do you say I am? And Peter stands up and says, you are Jesus, the son of the living God. And Jesus responds by simply saying, blessed are you, Peter, for flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my father in heaven. And I tell you, your name is Peter. And upon this rock, not rock of Peter, but upon the rock of the revelation of Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one sitting on the right hand of the Father, the one in whom all power, all authority in heaven and on earth has been granted to. Upon that revelation, he says, I will build my church. Hallelujah. And it goes on to say this, and the gates of hell will not prevail. I have never seen a gate as an offensive weapon. Ever once. It's defensive. It's those moments where the enemy takes ground that doesn't belong to him and he puts up a gate. And the invitation for you and me is that we'd bring heaven to earth and actually go and invade those gates and take back what the enemy has stolen. Our invitation is to hunger and thirst in such a way that, Daddy, I want to bring you to earth. And I want to share you with the people that I come in contact with. King Jesus. What an invitation. And it goes on to say this. It says, and I give you the keys of the kingdom. For what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
What an invitation. Guys, I, I'm a connoisseur of food. Okay, if, if you're not eating it in a way that your taste buds dance, that's just dumb. I, I don't know why you would just eat to satisfy hunger. <laughs> that's just weird to me. And if you do, let's talk. I'd love to pray with you. There's more, there's more to the kingdom of heaven. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Okay, come on now. So, but here's this. If I gave you the, the co- key, the code to my front door, you'd have access to everything in my home. There'd be nothing that isn't afforded you. There'd be my clothes, my refrigerator, the cupboards, everything that I have, you have access to. Does that make sense? So think about this. I give you the keys of the kingdom. You have access to everything God has. To one end and one end alone. Are you ready? So that what you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And what you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We are called to bring heaven to earth. Amen. 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 And lastly, as we button up our vision aspect of it. Why? Because the Bible invites us in simply this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, anyone who comes to know Christ is a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. And it goes on to say this. It says, and God was reconciling us to himself through Jesus Christ, and in turn gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Not that God was counting men's sins against them, but he reconciled us to himself. Therefore, we are ambassadors for God as he makes his appeal through us. Wow! I get to represent heaven? Are you kidding me? What an invitation that the creator of the universe, the author of man's first breath, would entrust into you and me the representation of God on earth. You're the highest manifested presence of God here on earth. You carry the resurrected power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he expects you to do something with it. You are an ambassador. You are his representative. Collectively as a church, we express God in all his hue and all his color. Yes, please. I want to be on that bus. So how do we do that? That translates into you and me the missional side of who we are. Our vision is to bring heaven to earth and forever change the spiritual culture that God has called us to. To have seismic activity, to have impact. To invade the communities with the gospel of Jesus Christ. To take back what the enemy has sold. To offer life where there's been death. To offer freedom when there's been captivity. To offer acceptance and love in a safe place where life and and this world has wreaked havoc on what's most true about us. But we do that missionally. And Cornerstone exists to extend vibrant, worshiping campuses to rural communities. That's why we exist. To be a part of Cornerstone Church is to simply say, Father, enlarge my heart. That I don't just think about Leadville. That I think about those that are dying and going to hell in Summit County, in Fairplay, and in Hartzell. 
God, enlarge my heart that I could be part of the collective group of people that will change a region, that will establish vibrant worshiping campuses in Buena Vista and Salida and Cotopaxi, and wherever you take us, Father, that we will restore the beauty of life and life to the fullest in rural communities. To be a part of Cornerstone is to look beyond the safety of just your campus and be a part of something bigger than yourself that says, I will sacrifice my time, my energy, my resources, that I will invite heaven to earth forever, to forever change my community and the communities around us. Yes, we are missional. In Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, it says, go. It didn't say get comfortable. <laughs> it's hard. I'm, dude. The Bible said, go and make disciples, yeah. not churchgoers. Mm -hmm. It says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Christ commissioned the seed of the New Testament church do not leave Jerusalem until you've received the promise of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts 1.8 it says, And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witness in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of this world. You and I have been invited into a great commission. You've received the power of the Holy Spirit to one end. And one end alone, to be a witness in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of this world. Yes. To be a part of Cornerstone Church is to say yes. Yes to bringing heaven to earth. Yes to the responsibility that I have. To live in such a way that the use of my life outlives my life. It's an invitation to yearn the deep parts of us crying out to the deep parts of the Father and say, I want to know you because I want to share you with the people I come in contact with. I want you to emanate in the things that I say and the things that I do in what I think and the inclinations of my heart. I want to bring heaven to earth will forever change the spiritual culture of the community that God has called me to. Missionally, Father, I want to extend your kingdom to rural communities because I know you have a heart for them. I want to end this morning with a story, just kind of give you some backdrop of why we are where we are today. I want to share it from a beautiful story found in John chapter 1 when Philip got wrecked by Jesus. Jesus of Nazareth. You know the story for some of you. It's familiar. But Philip flat, flat out collides with the creator of the universe and it wrecks him. He gets totally amped. All the stuff deep down inside of him comes to life. And he goes to his buddy Nathaniel. He goes, dude! You won't believe this. This is a Chuck paraphrase. This is not actually what it says in the Bible, in case, in case you were wondering. I, that would be a pretty cool translation, but it's, it's, it's not the, it's, it's just paraphrase, okay? And so Philip goes, and he's like, Phil, uh, he, Nathaniel, like, you won't believe this. Like, I, I came in touch with the one. The one, the, the Old Testament, 39 books have been talking about thousands of years of prophetic word that have been declaring. I came in contact. He wrecked me. He's real. And then I was like, well, who is he? He's Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Come on. And after hearing all of that, after Philip was like, dude, this guy got wrecked. Man, this guy must be real. Right? Nathaniel was like, right on, let's go. He goes, what? <laughs> Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Come on, come on. Come on. And I say this to you. 
Can anything good come out of Leadville? Come on. Come on. Come and see. Can anything good come out of Buena Vista? Can anything good come out of Summit County? Can anything good come out of Salida? In a world where we've watched the mega church, and I don't not I love mega churches, but do you guys realize that 80% of the American church lives in small rural communities of 25,000 or less. Do you realize that? And if the enemy can demobilize 80% of the church, who wins? Just because we're small churches doesn't mean that we've been removed from big impact. Just because we're small churches doesn't mean that we've been called to have big ministry. And so I remember in 2005, as I began my journey in seminary, I would drive, depending on the weather, through Leadville, Colorado. I would drive through Park County and Hartzell and Fair Play. And I remember God beginning to speak to my heart and saying, if I asked, would you you come to these places and bring life-giving ministry? If I asked you, would you create space to extend my kingdom and create vibrancy in small rural communities? And it was almost like this Isaiah moment, right? I'm not saying that it was, but it was almost like this Isaiah moment where the the father was saying, who will go for us? It was like, okay, daddy, send Cornerstone. We'll go. And so for the next several years, as a seminary student, I began to do research. What makes churches vibrant? Why do some churches succeed and others don't? And it was distilled into three things. And it's three things that come against the very nature of small communities. The first one, longevity. There is not a vibrant work in America where the pastor hasn't been there at least 15 years. Doesn't work, doesn't exist. Number two, multiple staff. God loves to diversify his portfolio. And number three, the resources for long-term sustainability. The average rural pastor is able to commit their time in usually about 18 months. That's the average. No longevity in that. Most small rural communities can barely afford the salary of a single pastor, let alone multiple staff. And most rural churches, let's be honest, as my daddy used to say, they couldn't afford a necktie for a piss in. And so what God's been able to do through Cornerstone, through you, is collectively we can do together what we could never do apart. And so when we gather our resources, we have the resources to set aside for multiple staff members. We have the resources to set aside for vibrant ministry. And then every time you add a staff member, do you realize that's not addition? It's exponential increase to the creativity and expression and line of sight and ability to connect with certain people. Guys, if I came to Leadville, some of you would love it and some of you would loathe it. (laughs) But every one of you loves Jason. Does that make sense? That's called diversified portfolio. (laughs) And collectively, we have the sustainability. (laughs) Hate. Despise. (laughs) Disgusted by. Did you write it down? Did you steward that word? And so I was at seminary, 
Here's a conversation that I never had. And I can say this with integrity. The brightest minds in America, men and women who are sacrificing major time and resources to go and extend the kingdom of heaven on earth. I never heard this conversation one time. You know what, Chuck? One of these days, when I graduate from seminary, I'm going to go to Fair Play, Colorado. It's a small community of about 1,200 people. The demographic is a bedroom community of Breckenridge. It's a ranching community. It's hostile. The largest church is about 22 people of the collective unit of churches in Fair Play, Colorado. It ministers to about 8% of the total community. Charlie, I don't know why, but if God would give me the permission to devote my entire life to bringing heaven to earth, I might have to be bivocational in my church, might only be 35, 40 people, but I am going to commit my life to bringing heaven to earth and forever changing that culture for the glory and honor of God. What an honor. Never heard that one time. The average age of the urban pastor is decreasing, while the average age of the rural pastor is increasing. So that means that young, vibrant, full of life, visionaries aren't finding their way to rural communities. They're finding their way to urban communities. And there's a whole slew of reasons why. But Cornerstone exists to eliminate those excuses. We will restore vibrancy to rural America. Amen. And we will do it together. Because we can do together what we never do apart. And guys, I hope to see it. I hope I'm not the David. I hope I'm the David and the Solomon, okay? But I hope one day I'll be able to look at your faces and we'll celebrate what I consider one of the crescendos of this mission. And that is a beautiful little community called Hartzell, Colorado in Park County. If you've ever driven to Springs, you've been through this little town. There's 100 people in its municipal, and there's 1,400 in a six-mile radius. One day, collectively, we're going to establish a vibrant, worshiping campus in that community. And that community will never be able to sustain itself because it doesn't have to, because we do together. Well, we could never do apart. And because something beautiful can come out of Nazareth, I believe something beautiful is going to come out of Hartzell, Colorado. And we're going to have the privilege of being a part of it. We will establish a pastor that probably will never be able to, by themselves, cover the salary. We will build brick and mortar. And it'll be a deep beacon, like the beacon of the temple of the, whole, of the Old Testament. They will come. They will come. I promise. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So, Cornerstone Church, it's vision. We're passionate about it. Bringing heaven to earth and forever changing the spiritual culture of the communities that God has called us to. Good folks, you are the highest concentration of the manifest presence of God here on earth. You carry the power of the resurrected Jesus inside of you. He expects you to do something with that. Link shields with us. Let's get on the bus. And missionally, let's say, Father, enlarge my borders and expand my territories. Give me a heart for more than just Leadville. Give me a heart for Summit, for Buena Vista, for Salida, for Cotopaxi.
for Park County, Fair Play, and Hartzell, and wherever else you want to take us. May we be a part of a missional movement that establishes vibrant worshiping communities in rural areas for His glory and His honor. Amen. 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 As the worship team comes, I love you. Love you, Charlie. Cornerstone Church has shown that together we could do amazing things that we could never do apart. And for many of you, you know the struggle that our Buena Vista campus endured over a year ago. And that is the epitome of our mission. Because if it weren't for you, if it weren't for Summit, and it weren't for Salida, the Buena Vista campus wouldn't have made it. That's true. But now, what you get to be a part of is a campus that's growing again. Hallelujah. It's a Amen. campus of families. It's, I don't know why God called us to be at a Vista, but not only did he call us to be at a Vista, this is the only church we've visited in the last six months. I don't know why it feels thin to me. It feels like heaven comes to earth quickly here. It's a thin place. I know God's called me here. And those people would have never experienced that if it weren't for the mission of our church. Hallelujah. It's real. It works. I believe great things come out of Nazareth. Amen. Let's worship.
how great the love of the Father He had lavished upon us. Yes. 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 That we might be called children of God. Thank you. For that is who we are. Hallelujah. And so God, I pray that we would walk away this morning knowing that we have received the spirit of sonship in which we cry, Abba, Father. Yes. That we are part of a family that wins. Yes. We are part of a legacy that wins. And so, Father, I pray that we would represent our family well. Yes. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. And a faith-filled church said, Amen. Amen.